Strike for them the story about the people of the town when the messengers came to it. And remember, when we sent two messengers to them, the people rejected both of them. What happened? They began to invite them to Islam. But in the process of calling them to Islam and asking them to embrace Islam, they belied both of them. You belied two messengers. Then we reinforced it with a third. Now there were three messengers in one town. فَقَالُوا And they all said together, We are truly messengers sent to you. Now look at the way the people respond. They said, You are nothing. You're just flesh and bones like us. You are all lying. Wow. The whole town is against the prophets. This time they're saying, Truly, we are messengers to you. Now listen to what these people say. They say, You guys are just a curse on us. Now the story turns. And a new character is introduced. From the furthest part of the town, there comes a man. He comes in haste. And he says to his people, Oh my people, follow those that have been sent. Follow these messengers. These three messengers, they're standing there and they're surrounded by these hostile people. And they've said to them that, you know what, you're liars. In that environment, he comes from the outskirts of the city as fast as he can and he enters through the crowd. He comes in between the prophets and the people and he says, Oh my people, listen, follow these messengers. He's put himself in a very risky situation. But look how he handles it. He says, follow those people They don't ask you for any money. They're calling you to do something that's going to benefit you. At the same time, it's going to be of no benefit to them. That is showing them that these people, they're sincere. They're genuine. It's clear that they only want good for you. And now look, standing in between the prophets and the thugs. And the thugs are thinking, hang on a minute, which side are you on? And now he's going to do a khutbah. Listen to his khutbah. Amazing. He starts off, he said, what? has to be wrong with me that I would worship other than the one who molded me out of nothing. He doesn't say what's wrong with you guys that you're going to worship someone other than the one who created you. He says what does it have to be wrong with? Me. وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And to him you will all return. So he started off with me and he ended with you. He says, am I going to take others beneath him as a deity when if Ar-Rahman wanted to cause me trouble, they couldn't help me out in the least bit. Now what is interesting is he doesn't say if Allah wanted to harm me, he says Ar-Rahman wanted to harm me. He's saying that look, you, you worship idols, you worship Others believe Allah. Do you know if Allah wanted to do something bad to you, could they help you? But hang on, why do you refer to Allah as Ar-Rahman? They're showing us that even though Allah is Ar-Rahman, He is just. And then He says, If I did, then I would be in clear-cut misguidance. Now you tell me, the audience of thugs at this moment in time, what do you think they're thinking? Like they're hearing Him speak out his mind about himself. What are they thinking? They're thinking, you know what, he's got a point. But that doesn't mean they're going to accept it, does it? You see, when a prophet comes to a people, he doesn't just come and tell them, listen, I'm a prophet. You need to accept that, full stop. He comes with a message. That message contains guidance. And that guidance has instructions. You need to do these things and you need to stay away from these things. Now are those do's and don'ts 
big or small. You gotta do five times a day salah. You gotta do one month fast. Is that small or big? It's big, isn't it? You can't do certain things. You can't have a girlfriend. Uh, it's a big thing, isn't it? So now you've got the messenger coming and saying, this is the message. Though the person may accept you're a messenger, the fact that somebody tells him what to do, people don't like that, do they? Yeah? So even though this man makes such an amazing khutbah, and they are thinking, you know what, he's got a point, they don't accept it. And then he comes out and he tells them, right in front of them, the reality. He says, truly I have believed. You see, he just exposed himself. He's got courage. And you know what? I believe in your master. You guys need to listen to me. SubhanAllah. Now look what happens next. Allah says, It was said, enter Jannah. We just shifted the camera from this scene of hostility to a scene of Jannah. This man is being told, go ahead. Take your place in paradise. What happened in between? What must have happened in between? He got killed. They said this man, after he told them that he is a Muslim, they jumped on him. They began to trample on him. Imagine the hatred, the pain he must have suffered. Allah glossed over all of that and said, forget about that. Listen to this. He was told, go and take your place in paradise. He went to paradise and not just paradise, he's, he was told and some said angels were telling him, take your place in paradise. But not this man. He says, oh my people, if only they knew. Subhanallah. He's still thinking about those disbelievers, he's still thinking about them. He said, only if they could see what I can see now. Man, they wouldn't have done what they did. Subhanallah. You know, that is the true meaning of compassion. That he wanted good for his people. No matter what they did, he always wanted them to be guided. Because he knows what Allah loves the most. Allah loves for us to worship him. He knows that so deeply, that no matter how horrible someone can be to him, he still wants what Allah loves. Even if it means having to be hurt in the cause. SubhanAllah. So much that he can remember those people even after he dies. And look what he says. Because of what Allah has forgiven me and made me of those that are honorable. He gave me honor. Did we, do we know the name of this person? Has a name been mentioned in the Quran? No. It means his identity has been hidden, isn't it? And so Allah honored him. Not just with paradise, but Allah honored him by putting him in the Quran for us. I mean, do you think he could have ever imagined, like when he was going through all, the, all those difficulties, that, you know what, there would be people in the 21st century gathering together to talk about my life? He would never have imagined that, isn't it? See how Allah honored people, real people. And now look, the last part of the story, Allah says about those people, we are not going to prepare an army to take out those disbelievers. We're not. They're not worth even me preparing an army of angels to send down to destroy them. They are insignificant in my eyes. And so how did Allah destroy them? We sent one piercing cry. One violent shout came and all of them went out like a candle until there was nothing left, just some smoke. Now, there's three really important lessons that we need to take from this story. The first lesson is, it's not about how much you know, it's about how much you do. This believing man, he lived on the outskirts of the city. He just heard about Islam and prophets and he embraced it. He knew this much. But you know what? The amount that he knew that Allah needs to be worshipped and people should not worship anyone other than him was enough for him to act on. And that is why he achieved what he achieved. Now the second lesson 
is this. It doesn't matter who you are, it matters what you did. This believing man was referred to in the Quran as a man. Allah didn't even say the man. His name is not mentioned. Don't think about who he was, think about what he did. You know, in the books of the series, they said this was an old man. An old man who was so old, he used to walk with a stick. 70 years old, they said he was. And he was suffering from a disease. And the third lesson, don't change your Islam for anyone. These prophets were called liars. But you know what? What did they keep on saying? Inna ilaykum la mursalun. They kept with their religion. 